downpours and generally dreary conditions was not enough to deter the thousands who attended the March for Science in Washington, D.C. on Saturday. I am studying neuroscience. Um, I go to Johns Hopkins University and um, I'm taking a sustainability class now that opened my eyes to many um, issues. So that's why I'm here. The day's action is taking place amidst what many say is an unprecedented assault on science's role in both policy and politics by the Trump administration and the private sector, whose focus, critics argue, is to fight regulation and enrich corporations at the expense of human life and the environment. If the Trump budget, the, the 42 percent reduction in EPA research, the banning of climate research, the 20 percent reduction in the National Institutes of Health, the, the on and on, if that goes through Congress, then then that's basically a decision that America is stepping away from global leadership in every sphere and that we are going to be less successful, less prosperous, less healthy in the future. It's hard to believe that this Congress is our best hope, but this Congress is our best hope. And the only way that we're going to get that to happen is that meetings with their constituents, their scientists and others stand up and demand change. Well, what was so disheartening is when the new administration came in and the data and the websites for EPA and for NASA, these, these organizations that have this repository of information that's showing all these trends were deleted, were, you know, were, were closed. And I think once we start hiding things and once we start putting our head in the sand, acting like things aren't happening, it will be the demise of our civilization. And so we, we must show, you know, use our science, use our data, use our people to help explain what's going on so we'll have a better understanding, for, for especially for our children's children's children. It's not conservatives or progressives. It's science. It's political, but not partisan. Today is also Earth Day, which is expected to be observed in dozens of countries around the world and marks the one-year anniversary of the signing of the Paris Climate Change Agreement, in which President Trump has threatened to pull out of. Other countries will retaliate and uh, then it's going to be like a tariff on us. It's called an international agreement, not an international do-what-you-want tent. Well, I personally found it sort of heartbreaking looking at President Trump's recent uh, press conference where he had all of these earnest young coal miners uh, standing behind him saying, boys, you're going back to work. Even if the demand for coal recovers, which they don't expect, but even if it does, they will buy next generation mining equipment and not bring on more workers. And then they had interviews with some people who were using the last of their life savings to get training for deep mine, deep mine work in coal mines. And it just breaks your heart to see these people being lied to. You know, climate change aside, just about the economic reality of their lives. We spoke to some of the thousands who took to the streets on Saturday. I'm here for the Science March. I'm here for science education, for women in science, for scientific funding. Basically, you know, pro-science stance. I'm against the general pervasive um, denial of science that is going on now. My name is Mary Jo Andrikan. I'm professor of chemistry and chemical biology at Northeastern University in Boston. I'm here to stand up for science to stand up for science diversity and Native Americans in science. I'm here to talk about my own research and that science creates jobs, creates new industries, and protects the planet, and also defends the country, national security, defends our warriors in the military. Many of those who work or study in the science fields were concerned by government defunding science programs, not just for themselves, but what it could mean for the country as a whole. I go do research in the summers and most of them are funded by NOAA. And I know that if I go to grad school, I'll get funding from the government, which are, it's getting cut. So it's kind of discouraging for my future because I don't know where I stand. Modern chemistry can't exist without the National Science Foundation and the National Institutes for Health. So, and both, the, both of those are on the chopping block. So if we want to have basic research and, you know, cure a disease, come up with alternative energy sources, then it's imperative that those survive. I was standing on Pennsylvania Avenue for his inaugural address and I heard it over the loudspeaker. It was the height of hypocrisy. Uh, American innovation has driven the economy for decades and now he wants to cut the, the funding for the research that feeds American innovation. We will not continue to be leaders 
in technology and industry without continued investment in scientific research. To try to you know, defund these satellite uh, uh, missions simply because of the inconvenient data that they're gathering about the reality of climate change is just so wrong-headed it, it's hard to even describe. Um, it's, it's, a, it's fundamentally a threat to all of civilization. Um, it's sort of like knowing that your child has a fever of 103 degrees and then deciding to stop measuring the temperature anymore because you don't like the information that you're getting. That's effectively what the Trump administration is trying to do here. The fight against climate change is being framed as a public health issue by experts. We're going to say enormous um, costs to our health, uh, to our economics. Um, just think about what happens as um, um, these infectious diseases begin to go to warmer climates. You know, we've already seen um, dengue, Zika, um, there's yellow fever now recurring in um, Brazil. So um, these, these vector-borne diseases are a serious public health threat. Climate change is front and center a health issue and a security issue and an economic issue. But health, I mean, when it, you have hotter, more humid days, asthma cases, emergency room visits, cardiovascular incidents all increase exponentially, costing a huge burden to our health care system, which is already stressed out. So this is terrible and expensive, and people suffer. People literally die. Uh, this is a big, and that's in America, let alone in other countries where infrastructure is even worse, where changes in climate might bring in new diseases increase terrible floods or destroy food supplies and food security. So this is dangerous stuff. This isn't theoretical. This isn't about polar bears. This is about the people we love, the people around us, our own kids. Drastic proposed budget cuts to government agencies such as the EPA, NASA, NOAA, and the National Institutes of Health is what drew many out into the streets of Washington today, those within the scientific and medical communities, in addition to that of the general public. But they say, don't worry, if you didn't get out here on Saturday, they'll be back in force next Saturday for the People's Climate March. Reporting from Washington, D.C., for The Real News Network, I'm Kim Brown.